Nothing could be further from the truth. He's not mad. God the Father took all of his anger and all of his wrath and he poured it on and he placed it on Jesus when Jesus was on that cross. He's not mad at you. He's not condemning of you. You say, well, pastor, you have no idea what I've done. No, I don't. And I don't really want to know. So don't tell me. <laughs> he knows. And by the way, it didn't catch him off guard. It did not take him by surprise. Could you imagine God in heaven going, <gasps> he did what? <laughs> there is no sin that you and I can commit that God's grace is not sufficient for. He doesn't condemn you. He loves you. And he's made provision and he's made payment for that sin. There's no sin that you can commit. You know what I love about Romans 8 is that there's like, like a grocery list that the Apostle Paul gives us there by the Holy Spirit telling us all the things that can't separate us from God's love for us. Do you realize that there is nothing you can do that can make God love you less? I always think, man, if I'm not you know, in the word as much as I'd like to be, I'm not praying as much as I'd like to pray, I'm not having as much time in my devotions, I'm thinking, you know, I've not had a good week. God's not too happy with me. He's had it up to here with me. <laughs> you know, he's talked to me till he's blue in the face. He's had it. No, that's not God. God does not have a short fuse. Could you imagine? You pray, Father which art in heaven. What? Oh, sorry, God, is this a bad time? He's slow to anger, full of mercy and compassion, long-suffering. His loving kindness is such that, again, we could not possibly fathom it. So he did not come into the world to condemn. He came to the world to save but it says, he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. That's the Easter message, God's love. Greater love hath no man. Now, here's the question. Does that mean that only those who believe in Jesus Christ will be saved? Answer? Yes, you know, pastor, you're just like all the rest, you narrow-minded Christians. There are many ways to God. Oh, really? What would it be like for you if you boarded an airplane and the pilot got on the intercom and said, welcome aboard, there are many ways to reach our final destination. We're just gonna pick one and, well, see how it goes. Do you wanna be on that plane? I don't, I want to reach my destination and there better be a way and not only a way, but there better be the way to get there. Jesus is the only way to get to the Father and he's the only one who can save us. Acts 4.12 Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. He's the only one. There is no other one. Well, what about Muhammad? What about Confucius? What about Buddha? They're dead. I don't mean to rain on anybody's parade, but they're still dead. They did not rise from the dead. Only Jesus rose from the dead. Buddha does not love you. Buddha does not know you. Confucius does not know you. And Muhammad certainly does not love you. I can assure you of that. And none of them died for you. 
I love what this Sir Lionel Alfred Luck who said. He said, the bones of Muhammad are in Medina. The bones of Confucius are in Shantung. The cremated bones of Buddha are in Nepal. Thousands pay pilgrimages to worship at their tombs which contain their bones. But in Jerusalem, there's a cave cut into this rock and this is the tomb of Jesus and it's empty. <laughs> Isn't Easter about Jesus dying on the cross? You know, we had a Buddhist uh, neighbor living next to us because we live really close to a Hanganji temple uh, in Kailua. And my uh, son Levi was asked by this Buddhist neighbor, uh, isn't Easter about Jesus dying on the cross? And he answered and said, no. Easter is not about Jesus dying on the cross. Easter is about Jesus rising from the dead three days later. <laughs> and then I won't tell you what he went on to say I told him to be a little bit more loving when he said that but <laughs> had to do with Buddha needing to go on a diet and uh, being a metal god <laughs> I said you know don't, just tell him about the love the Lord has for them <laughs> we're working on that Maybe to you, Easter's about Jesus dying on the cross, and Christmas is about Jesus being born in a manger. I mean, that's just what it's about. And that's why you, you know, come to church on Christmas and Easter. And again, I, I cannot tell you how delighted that I am that you're here. Now, I have to tell you the truth, though. I have to speak the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. But... I will speak that truth in love. And the truth of the matter is you can go to church on Christmas and you can go to church on Easter, but you can still go to hell. Oh, so much for God being loving. How can a loving God send people to hell? He doesn't send anybody to hell. And that's not the message of Easter. In fact, the fact of the matter is, that's why he came, is so that no one would go to hell. I mean, for God so loved the world that he gave in order to save, save from what? Hell. See, we call the gospel, which is the good news, the good news. Well, what's the good news? Well, listen, the badder the bad news is, the gooder the good news is. Now, I realize that's not proper English. Please don't send me an email to tell me. But here's the point. The bad news is, is that we were all born sinners, which is why we all need to be born again, spiritually. We were born physically as sinners. We need to be born again spiritually. John 3 says that Without being born again, no one will see the kingdom of, of God, the kingdom of heaven. In other words, unless you're born again of the Spirit of God, you will not see heaven. We'll talk more about that in a moment. But in order for me to give you the good news, the good Easter news that he's risen, I have to give you the reason why he's risen. Why did he come in the first place? Why did he have to die? And... Again, in love, I need to let you know that it might get a little bit uncomfortable. Let me share with you what Corey Tin Boom said. If I'm at your house and I began to move from room to room straightening pictures on your wall, that's commendable. But if your house is on fire and I begin to move from room to room straightening pictures, I've become evil and wicked, not choosing to use my time to save your life. I don't know if you realize it or not, but this world's going down in flames. It's going to crash and burn. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And so I've decided to, instead of straightening the pictures of our neat and tidy Christian lives, 